I'm Sam, I am an artist working predominantly in oil paint and I document my practice via short form videos a lot of the time, time lapses etc and that's sort of an extension of the practice in the sense that I work in my studio space and documenting the start of a painting to the end of a painting is sort of folded into the painting itself. As I said, oil painting, predominantly portraiture and I tend to work on the themes of building identity, the idea of reclaiming artifice as a source of pride. I think in this country there's a like a inbuilt cynicism about artificiality and there's a valorization of, of the real which I don't necessarily agree with. I think some of the most beautiful things in the world are so artificial and so constructed and so performative and I think that's what my work tends to focus on. I tend to draw inspiration from fashion editorials, from the people around me, from my friends uh, and it feels particularly sort of, I wouldn't say postmodern, but maybe post technology in the sense that uh, I'm never trying to capture that sense of the real. I'm leaning into more artificial elements of constructing oneself. My first perception of fashion was that fashion is decorative, that fashion is um, sort of a shell put on top of something. Funnily enough, that was my understanding of painting too when I first started painting was that a piece needs to look good on a wall, that a piece needs to look good contextually with the things around it. So my understanding of fashion and my understanding of painting have moved in tandem uh, in that I've understood the more uh, multi-layered, more nuanced um, idea that fashion is, is like a cultural signifier. Um, it's so much more than a piece of decoration similarly to painting. So I think I think my understanding of, of, of the two fields has been moving in tandem, so it's felt natural to fold fashion into my practice. It also stems from the fact that uh, I'm a model, I've been a model, um, I've been, I wouldn't say so, I've been in the fashion industry for a little while, loosely, and the images that surround me daily are from that world, editorials, beautiful features, shoots, and in a sense the work makes itself. These shoots are so complex in the sense that there's so many people behind a single image. There's a director, there's a lighting person, there's a costume designer, there's um, multiple people on set for multiple different jobs and I think it's so apparent in the final image. So many different sort of creative outlooks creating something essentially beautiful. I used to label myself a bit of an aestheticist and I think I carried that forward to, uh, to, to, to my modern approach to painting in that these images are objectively beautiful to me, they're alluring, they're, they're captivating. Uh, there's probably a, a, a deeper, less vapid statement to be made there about the, 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 the nature of, of humans and like our, our gravitation towards art and towards making beauty out of something uh, maybe less beautiful objectively. But I tend to resist those ideas, I think a beautiful image is a beautiful image and that is probably profound enough as a justification to keep making the images. That's not to say that I just make images because they're beautiful, but it's just an association that I make between the images that I see in fashion and the images that I paint. I think this is something that I struggle with is the palatability of my work, in the sense that um, I've worked on the craft for a long period of time. It's something that is quite aspirational to me. I think it would, you'd maybe be hard pressed to find, this isn't me blowing my own trumpet for example, but you'd maybe be hard pressed to find one of my paintings and not be able to find an objective sense of beauty in there. If anything, this is me cussing myself. I don't, I don't pride myself on that. It's essentially me appeasing people. I think a lot of my my paintings are objectively or, or founded in an objective beauty. I dub my style as the pseudo realist. So I'll take a surface and smooth it down. I'll essentially smooth surfaces that are meant to be smooth. Uh, create undulations that aren't necessarily there just for the sake of of a pleasing gradient or contrast. Something smooth or like slicked down with oil, which I think is. It is a naturally, um, a naturally beautiful thing. Maybe I'm just projecting. Maybe, maybe it's not um, an objective beauty, but I think that's where, that's where I started painting, and that's where I, I carry on painting. In this idea of, uh, I think it is objective beauty, yeah. But I struggle with it because I think that's potentially at odds with the stuff that I do in my sketchbooks, um, which is uh, by any means sort of. Um, more visceral or uh, concerned with like an inner world rather than an outer world and that's probably the um, the distinction that I draw. So one of my favourite um, artists is Francis Bacon, dubbed uh, by critics of the time as, as horrific images or images that were visceral or grotesque. Whether you agree with that or not I think you can see where those criticisms are 
are founded from, and I believe that that's probably because the work is concerned with an inner world, and that's a reflection of, of an objective reality. So that's essentially what I do away with in my paintings. Um, when I say that I'm constructing something or dealing with artifice, it's very much an outward experience. Um, it means I struggle with um, people talking about my work in a particularly profound way, or like a um, an emotionally rooted way. That's not to, see they, not to say they can't, it's just to say that maybe I don't. I don't see that in my work. Um, so people sometimes come and, and talk about the emotions that they feel in, in a particular portrait that I've made. And these are never emotions that are on, on a surface, because I'm dealing in artifice, I'm not dealing in, in, in feeling, I'm not dealing in, a, in something that um, visceral. But it's there and it's obviously, that's what people are taking from the image. I see the world in layers. I don't tend to work in layers. And this, and this is related to the point I made earlier about palatability. So at any given, up to work, a la prima, so I'll work uh, wet in wet. So traditional oil painters or like the masters would have worked in more traditional layers. Um, I don't deal in layers and I never have because I don't have the patience, I don't have the time. Um, time is money, I'm not particularly well off. I work quite quickly and meticulously and in a sense performatively. In the sense that, um, for example, this painting here, it, it's a, it's ultimately it's a finished painting at this point because um, I'm, I'm essentially scratching away the image from the surface. I'm not building something up because I couldn't live with myself living around something that uh, wasn't a innate reflection of my craft or like a, a final finished piece, which is a massive flaw. Like I wish I could paint in layers. I wish I could um, create an image gradually, but I don't. I labour away meticulously over the detail. That's obviously my practice, it's obviously not inherently good or inherently bad, but moving forward I'd like to embrace my bodily functions a bit more. Obviously it's, it's quite um, small and precise the way I paint now, but I would, I would love to be able to be more uh, broad and expansive. Obviously incorporating my more traditional elements of maybe traditional portraiture, but then uh, contextualising it with more um, uh, bodily expressions with, with the paintbrush. I need like seven forms of media going on at any given time when I'm painting and I struggle to paint when it when it's quiet. But um, like quantifying the effect that has on the painting is, is probably a very difficult task because um, I think that's just for me and I don't necessarily think that funnels into the painting. I think people like to romanticize or when I talk to someone who's, who's, who's maybe not an artist or even artists actually who talk about their work as a release or as a, um, a therapeutic calming act never understood it, it's, it's, it's exhausting. Uh, painting is, is like so tiring, like I'll be in sweats by the time I'm finished. Um, obviously physically exhausting because I think maybe my, my whole body holds the tension of the brush. And then also um, more conceptually or, or intellectually in the sense that I'm always concerned with this idea of balance and, and I still don't think I've hit it. Uh, I, very, I very seldom make a piece that I'm f uh, fully happy with so it's, it's, it's just a matter of continually compromising. And that is like a chipping away process. That's, that's difficult. Um, Cause obviously then I'm confronted after every piece with what am I doing? Like, why am I making this? This is stressful as hell. Like um, this isn't what I wanted to make. And that's like a, uh, it's like flagellation. It's like, um, it's like you're a medieval peasant, just like whipping himself on the back and you have to ask why you're doing it. I don't know why I do it. I don't, I don't think I've, I've come to that conclusion. I guess it is a release, but it's a very measured release. And the release maybe comes once the piece is finished. And up until that point, you're sort of teetering on a knife's edge. Maybe it's a thrill, maybe it's like a, a hedonistic thrill, maybe it's like a bit self-destructive. Uh, maybe that's why I'm drawn back to it continually again and again. But it's torturous, like <laughs> the burden of being an artist is torturous. Uh, I think I've often talked about the, the reasoning behind my practice as uh, the idea of doing something, not in a capitalist sense, but in, in a sense that's um, I guess deeply ordered or, or deeply um, like, a, like a driving force. I, I'm, I love the act of painting because it's so concerned with uh, tasks and, it, and it's so concerned with the day-to-day -day of, of creating. So for example, you, you go to the shop, you buy the canvas, you bring it home, you prime the canvas, you plan the piece, you clean your brushes, you maybe go buy some new brushes. Oh damn, I haven't got turps. You go get some turps. That's all the act of living. It's obviously deeply performative, but painting for me is essentially just a, a way to live, like not, not through the final piece itself, but through the practice. Um, there's just so much to do all the time, and I think I'm, I just like doing things. It's, it's a strange justification that I, I don't think I've really heard any other artists mention before, but I think I'm just deeply concerned with like, staying busy.
so if I can do it while making images that provoke thought or make me happy to some crumb or, or maybe can eventually then that, that's like aspirational that's something to work to it's like a deep itchiness um, and art is probably the closest thing to scratch that itch like I'm itchy I'm um, like vibrative like vibrating all the time and then the art is is like not even soothing it, it just um it drives the the, 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 the vibration yeah, it's not, it's not a romantic notion. Um, it, it's like a very, uh, yeah, kind of kind of like laborious or like um, mundane way way to view it. But I think um, I, I also think I'll, I'll probably look back in fifty years' time and think, oh, this was a meditative practice. Oh, you were getting more out of this than maybe you think. But I don't see it right now. The one macro I've got in my life, like the one overarching um, sort of like epithet from the beginning to the end. Um, I, I, like, I struggle to conceptualize, conceptualize time. This is the one time I can, is that when I'm like 80 or so, when I'm probably ready to get out of here, I want to reach that balance that I referred to earlier. And that's kind of the one goal maybe that I have, is to make a piece that like, whoa, like I'm fully um, accepting of. And I, and I envisage that that'll probably be when I'm older, like super old. Um, or I could just continually fail and, and, and not realize that the stuff that I want to, but then that, that in itself is a worthwhile way of living. I think, like, I don't think we're we're built to succeed all the time, at least. Anyway, I don't think that's a sustainable way to be. I think that maybe the pursuit of success is, is is worth it, but a lot of the time, once you get it, you don't know what to do with it. So it's probably good that I don't haven't made a painting that I love because maybe I'd sit on my laurels or something. Maybe I'd like, maybe I'd stop being itchy. I think it's like a um like a jamminess. There's like a stickiness to the texture, like a like a um. Yeah, like I think jamminess is the closest I've got to it in, in, in the texture of the paint itself. Like it, it feels really intuitive to paint with. Um, I wouldn't be able to recreate an image I've made in oils uh, in, my, in my sketchbooks with, with like a pen. It's probably also um, an internalized hierarchical view of the art world that I haven't yet unpicked. Like there are particular aspects of my painting that it's difficult to argue there's not craft behind it. It's not something I'm proud of or enjoy, but it's something I'm trying to unpick in my work. So I think there's there's probably that as well in the sense that like oil was notoriously difficult to work with, or like it has been used by masters in the past, or like the canon is has often been involved with oils. I am quite cynical about it, but I'm trying to re trying to also reclaim it and, and like put some respect on my name because um, I do like it. It is an aspirational idea of me like craft and control. I was watching an Earl Sweatshirt interview a couple of days ago, and he was talking about that idea of. He, he was using the uh, allegory of being a magician in the sense that uh, if I know what I'm doing, if I don't know what I'm doing, um, I might really cut this woman in half. Or like better, better still, being a driver. Like if I know what I'm doing, if I put the hours into this craft, we can have a bit more fun on the road. We can go a bit more crazy within the bounds of what's safe, and we're not going to hurt no one. And maybe that's the appealing idea of like complexity or, or craft to me is that I can have a little bit more fun. And I will, this is what I'm talking about in terms of the macro view, like I will when I'm older, I'm sure, I'll be able to actually steer, steer the car in a way that's fun. But the moment it is still very much grounded in the idea of um, craft or like a good painting. Why does it have to be when you're older? Why not sooner than that? Why are you giving yourself the timeline? I don't know. The yeah, I don't know. I think I'm just trying to prove something to myself that like I'm a painter's painter. Like um, I think I just have struggled to unpick that um, that uh, like problematic hierarch hierarchical view of good art. Um, I'll by no means apply it to any other any other people's work to myself. My favourite artists are so concerned with like abstract expressionism or like bodily movement or um, sort of more um, recent uh, artistic phenomena. So it's, it's only a yardstick that I use to measure my own work. And it probably again is concerned with that idea of itchiness. Like I want to be able to keep making like, I think, I think maybe there's no particular rush to get to that point where I'm balanced or, or um, I'm making work from my soul. Like, I mean, I probably am at the moment by extension, but I think I'm most proud of my sketchbooks because uh, there, there is like an immediacy to it. Like talking about unpicking the ideas of being a craft based painter that goes out the window when I pick up a sketchbook, like it's second nature to me to make an image and like 90% of the time I love what I'm drawing 
Um, I've always been a draftsman, like drawing was the first foray into art anyway. So it feels like second nature to me. Um, and it's so deeply unconcerned with the work that I do on a canvas, at least in my head, like there's such a massive jump there. Um, that's probably partly the reason why I don't, um, haven't exhibited the work as well. It's because m maybe in a less capitalist sense, but this idea of branding, the idea of a cohesive image as an artist, it's something that's valuable to me. Like, I think some of the artists that I respect the most have a, have a, a through line through their work. And there's something to be said for like a cohesive body of work. I think it can elevate um, trash work. I think it can de-elevate uh, great work. And I love that idea of like an oeuvre as, as a, like a leveller. That's sick. So introducing my sketchbook work at the moment into my like public portfolio doesn't seem uh, like something that's um, appealing to me. Despite the fact that it uh, scratches that itch, like it's it's very, it's the work that I can be proud of. Like talking about like the soul, that's probably the closest I get to a release of like a meditativeness in my work. <laughs>